Hello, beloved. Once again, this is your brother Emmanuel Trinbokudia. Welcome to Wonderful Savior TV. It is another edition. We shall be studying the Word of God. Please, if you find this video, kindly subscribe. The name of the channel is Wonderful Savior TV. Subscribe to the channel, give your comments, like it, and share. Let us spread the word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the gift of life you've given us. As we go into your word, may you through your Holy Spirit enlighten understanding and help us to understand your mysteries understand your word so that it will lead us into eternal life in jesus name have you prayed amen god bless you for being part of the journey in this edition we'll be talking about the wonderful jesus and we'll be asking why is Jesus Christ called wonderful? Why is Jesus Christ called wonderful? There are a lot of scriptures that proves that Christ Jesus is indeed wonderful. But we have some scriptures here that we'll be using to prove that Jesus Christ is indeed wonderful just as the Bible calls him please if you have your Bible with you kindly use it I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Holy Bible we have a lot of points why is Jesus Christ called wonderful the first point Jesus Christ called wonderful because he was prophesied to come into the world even before he came the second point his God nature Jesus Christ, God nature, his deity makes him wonderful. His virgin birth. Jesus Christ's virgin birth makes him unique among any other person who has ever come onto this earth. Then his miraculous and healing works so makes him stands out his death and resurrection also makes him stand out then his power to save there is no one who has the power to save like Jesus have To begin with, we will start with the prophecies concerning him, and we will take two prophecies. The first one is Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. I'm reading from the King James Version. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel even before Christ Jesus came to this earth 
over centuries, over 700 years before Jesus Christ was prophesied to come. The Lord gave prophecy through Isaiah that Jesus will be born by a virgin and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Another scripture or prophecies is also in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 to 7 and I read for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end and upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this so we found out that even before Jesus came there were prophecies concerning him that may seem unique that even before he has to come to earth he was spoken of that he will come and description was given of how he will be born the honor that will be upon him the kinship that he will reign from they were all spoken of that he even reigned from the line of David. He will sit on the throne of David. That makes Jesus Christ wonderful. We also pick from another point. His God nature. We're reading from 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Then we also be reading from Colossians 2 verse 9. Reading from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world received up into glory this tells us that jesus christ is god god who was manifested in the flesh meaning manifested as a human being or god taking upon himself the human nature doesn't that makes it unique does that make it special? I believe it does. And you bear with me that this is so unique that God taking upon the flesh is so wonderful. God has the power to do so. We also read from Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We are talking about the nature of God, which is in Jesus. Jesus Christ is God. Bible says here that the fullness of the Godhead, that means God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit 
is revealed in bodily form through Jesus Christ. So when you see Jesus Christ, you have seen God the Father. You have seen God the Son. You have seen God the Holy Spirit. That is the meaning. Doesn't that make it wonderful? I trust and I hope it does. And you bear with me. That makes it so unique. Let us also pick from another point. His virgin birth. We just read from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. That unto us a son is given. And the government shall be, shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in the previous chapter, chapter 7 verse 14, the prophet said that, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. Jesus Christ was given birth to by a virgin, the Virgin Mary. This makes it unique, wonderful. His virgin birth. His virgin birth. You also read Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was managed to put her away privily. But while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost and it shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is which being interpreted is God with us, meaning that Jesus Christ being born into the world tells us that God is with us, meaning that the child that is born is God who has taken upon the form of a human being. So the child that is born is God, but he has taken upon himself human form. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. And knew her not till he had brought forth her firstborn. He called his name Jesus. The prophecy is fulfilled. We also talk of his miraculous and healing works. There are myriads of miracles and healing works that Jesus did whilst on earth. And even now he does it to many people around the world including you. You are a miracle. I'm also a miracle because of Jesus. We will read from Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 3, then John chapter 2 verse 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. When he was come down from the mountain, great motives followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, 
thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Isn't that amazing, my brother, my sister? That somebody who is of leprosy, somebody who was dejected because being a leper, you shouldn't even be part of the community. When you are coming to be among people, you feel shy. You shy yourself away from people. But Jesus healed him. Something which the Pharisees couldn't do. The Sadducees and the scribes, they couldn't do. But Jesus did it. That makes him wonderful. His healing works. His miraculous works. We also read from John chapter 2 verse 1 to 11. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called, and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the profound Jews. Containing two or three fair, king, fair kings apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning do set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. The miracles of Jesus makes him wonderful we also talk of his death and resurrection his death and resurrection we'll be reading from matthew chapter 27 Verse 45, and we also read Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 downwards. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land, and the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took the sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The, the rest said, Let's be, Let us see whether Elias will come and save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Seeing the circumstances even surrounding his death makes us understand that Jesus is wonderful. There was darkness throughout the whole land. For a space of three hours, who on this earth have died? Or during getting to a time of death, there was so darkness over the whole earth is only to Jesus, it's only with Jesus Christ before he died. Then we also read about his resurrection, it makes him wonderful. 
Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 going. And in the, in the end of the Sabbath, as it, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back a stone from the, do from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment was as snow. For the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, he is risen. He said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. You see how marvelous it is. Jesus rose from the dead. The disciples, the women, were going to the tomb to see where the body of the Lord laid. They went there, he has risen. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and told them that they should go. He knows that he's, they're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, he's risen. Who on this earth, aside Jesus, died and himself rose again by himself? There is nobody except Jesus. He alone died and himself he rose again. That makes him wonderful because he said that he put down his life and he also raised up. He allowed himself to die. And he also rose up on the third day. Makes Jesus so wonderful. His power to save also makes him wonderful. We read from Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a certain man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, he, and he was rich, and he saw, and he sought to see Jesus who, who he was, and could not for the praise, because he was little of stature. And he ran and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for, the, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And the head stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and, have, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. This is Zacchaeus. He said he was a sinner, somebody who was a task collector. At this day, they were not regarded because. They collected as much, even more than they're supposed to collect, and they gathered to themselves riches. This man was a sinner, so people ridiculed him. That when even Jesus was going to meet him, he said, Why should he go and meet a sinner? But upon an encounter with Jesus, his life was transformed, he was saved from his sins, he was delivered. And he had a restitution to do right from that time. He said he is going to give his goods to the poor. And if he's taking anything by first person, he's going to add on onto it for food. We see the repentance that has come to his heart. The power of Jesus to save. It is only Jesus who can save that man and who did. We also look at Acts chapter 26, verse 12 to 18, concerning Apostle Paul's conversion. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, 
at midday o king i saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and when uh, shining right shining round about me and them which journey with me and when we were all falling to the earth i heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the hebrew tongue so so why persecuted thou me decide for thee to kick against the, the press and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness for both the ten, for both these things which thou hast seen and those things in which i will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom now i send to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light from the power of satan unto the unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me see paul who was so glued to the law that he didn't allow the christians to have a free way to share the gospel so he banned them to prisons but when he encountered jesus he accepted the message of salvation he was delivered from his sins the lord met him and told him that he's delivering him from the gentiles from his own people and from the gentiles and the lord made it clear from the words he spoke that he is turning the people's eyes from the power of satan into the power of god meaning that jesus says that he has the power to turn people from satan and rather direct them to god unto himself jesus has the power to save making him wonderful making him wonderful brethren upon hearing this video if you have not given your life to christ i recommend him to you jesus is the wonderful one he will save you let us share this video comment down below please if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe let's share the word let's share the word jesus is the wonderful one understand it let's share the word let's subscribe let's comment god richard bless you we shall meet again in another edition shalom